So hey everybody, welcome back to our channel. I'm Sarah. And I'm Kevin. And we're an American family of six with four kids. And a cat. <laughs> and kids begging us for a dog, so I'm not sure oh, if we'll get there are. yet. <laughs> They're begging us. <laughs> uh, I, we love dogs too though. It would be fun to get a dog, but I don't want to have to house train it. I'm not good at that. So I'm gonna have to put the kids in charge of that. Um, so with four kids and a cat and we move from America to Germany in February of 2021 and wow it has been the biggest adventure of our lives absolutely <laughs> I mean we've lived in France before and that experience doesn't even begin to compare with what we've gone through <laughs> I lived in Japan for six months too and that was pretty crazy but it's a giant culture shock but uh, this moving here with the family and everything all on our own that's been hard yeah, it's been a hard year and, and we should do a whole video just about that. Um, you know, the challenges of being a foreigner, I think for anyone around the world, it's not that Germany is any more is particularly uniquely, hard. Yeah, or no, that. it's just, I think being a foreigner anywhere is gonna, we're gonna have these challenges. So anyway, we could save that for another video. So we've been doing a whole school series for you because we had so many requests for mm -hmm. let us know how your kids are doing in school. So we started with kindergarten with Ella, she's five, all the way up to gymnasium with our two oldest. So make sure to go check out those videos. I'll link the playlist in the description below. It's called Raising Your Children in Germany. But today, Kevin's excited to talk about... <laughs> yeah, math and nerdy stuff. <laughs> nerdy stuff. Yeah, so I mean, it's just cool to see, you know, they come home with their homework and helping them with their math and and just seeing the differences between this, how math is taught in America versus here in Germany. It's, just, it's neat being trained as an engineer and being doing math stuff all the time in my in my work is cool to see. And when we first moved here and started, the kids started attending school, we noticed right away that the math is taught differently mm -hmm. and is way more conceptual and sort of open-ended than yeah. it is in America. It was a challenge for us to help them with their homework because <laughs> we're not used to these open-ended questions yeah. and how am I actually supposed to answer this? I was just doing homework yeah. with Griffin the other day where there was no question. And right. you're just supposed to come up with what you think the equation is according to this word problem. And I'll yeah. show it to you and here. It does, yeah, like you say, there's no actual question. It doesn't say, you know, it just gives a bunch of statements and there's yeah. no question, yeah. calculate, th calculate this. And you just have to figure out, well, what is a reasonable thing to calculate? Which I think for Germans is, uh, okay, you're used to it. Yeah. But we had never seen that before. Mm -hmm. And so I had to think, like Griffin and I were doing his homework together and I'm like, I don't know. I don't, you know, so it took a while to figure out what the, what they're asking for. And a lot of the math <laughs> is like tied to practical everyday things. Like yes. there's a lot of ones about um, going to the supermarket, going to the supermarket and how much change are you going to get back or how much money do you have to pay if you're buying five of these and three of those or whatever. Um, you know, Gabriel's in sixth grade doing all these calculations of fractions and it's like you want to bake a cake and here's the recipe, but you only have yes. three of the four eggs that you need. What are the, what are the amounts of the other ingredients you need because you need to scale them back? Uh, yeah. then another one was, uh, you had to calculate all these times based on a time schedule that had a Munich had a Munich time schedule of the S-Bahn in Munich. Love and they it. had yeah. to calculate, you know, mm -hmm. hey, you know, what's your layover going to be, you know, in, in in this station and what time are you going to get here and there? Yeah. And they had to do the calculations, but it was all based on reading a chart to be able to navigate the S-Bahn in Munich. 
And it's like, I, I mean, it. that's you need to be able to do that. And it's really cool that the math <laughs> questions are asking about stuff like that. For those of us who didn't ever want to become engineers like Kevin, we were always complaining, you know, in the US, like in high school, we're like, why do we need to learn trigonometry and calculus if I'm never going to do something that's mathematical uh, in my future? I knew math was not in my future. Although it was, I was actually good at it. I made good grades, but you know, so when you're from a young age showing, hey, this is how math is in everyday life, you're going to use it every day. And you need to understand concepts more than like three plus four is seven. You know, you need to understand how do these numbers fit into my daily life. And I feel yeah. like here in Germany, they do that very well. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how to be in high school. We haven't gotten to high school. So let us know in the comments below, does it continue on through? Uh, well, you don't call it high school here, but- um, The later years the of later gymnasium. Years. <laughs> yeah or Realschule or whatever, you know. So it's cool to see how there's so much more of a focus on applying math to everyday life and showing kids, you do use this and you do need it. And it makes it more fun, I think, because yeah. you've got a story. Now there are word problems and, uh, and like, what scenarios was the title? in the US also. The, what was um, the title of the homework Griffin had yesterday? It was like, uh, don't be afraid of word problems or that's something the, like yeah, that. Yeah, and that's <laughs> the one I'm talking about. Yep. <laughs> Keine Angst mit uh, yeah. whatever. Yeah, I can't said. remember Keine what Angst. <laughs> Keine Angst mit. So don't worry. <laughs> and I was like, uh, I have ich habe Angst. <laughs> <laughs> but thankfully, you know, Griffin's teacher, uh, I guess in a way he's sort of a Gastschüler in uh, elementary school. He, he, there's him and another kid who are both foreigners. And uh, the teacher is always saying, you know, if the, especially German work is too hard, uh, don't worry about it so much. And so we don't have tons of pressure with the homework. The teacher understands that we're kind of clueless. <laughs> so <laughs> We're getting there. I'm really impressed, actually, the way they teach mm -hmm. math here in Germany. In, mm -hmm. uh, in America, it's very much a focus on the arithmetic of calculating numbers, doing long division, you know, just manipulating the numbers. Be, I don't know, for whatever reason, that's what's most important on all the standardized tests. So they really drill learning, you know, learning the numbers. Which in a day of calculators, and we've had yeah, right. them for decades, <laughs> it doesn't really make so much sense anymore. We don't need to know, I mean, you need to know how to do it for basic things when you're in a grocery store, or, right. you know, but... <laughs> You can just use a calculator. I mean, when do I actually sit down and do long division in, in life, you know? Unless no. you become an engineer, I suppose. Well, I don't do a lot of long division, but I, <laughs> no. but I do do a lot of, there's still a lot of arithmetic I need okay. to do, but okay. that's in my particular job. Yeah, not mine. No. <laughs> One of the things I think is really cool is it's so obvious the engineering mindset of Germany, or that is sort of a stereotype that Germans focus German on engineering, engineering, you know, that they're great at manufacturing and engineering here, which is very true. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the first time I experienced that was when I was a university professor in Sweden. That was the first faculty position I had was in Sweden and going through the textbooks. Uh, and, and nowadays, English is the dominant textbook in engineering, but there were times when I would still run across German textbooks at the university level. Oh, really? And cool. tradi traditionally, you know, until the last 40 years or so, the, the, the typical textbook for engineering in Sweden was a German textbook because the Swedish population is so small, there weren't a lot of Swedish language textbooks in engineering. So, you know, German was the language of engineering even in Sweden. So, you know, it, Germany's world renowned for having that engineering mindset and we see it every day in even the in work. Grundschule. Even in Grundschule, we yeah. see that engineering mindset. I remember, you know, back last year when Grayson was in fifth grade, I was blown away by this uh, Würfelgebaude. It's, and, and, you know, it's one of those things that every German kid learns. And for me, was this totally new, crazy yeah. thing. And for those of you that don't know what this is, it, it's doing three-dimensional visualization of things and you've got all these little cubes and you stack all these little cubes and little mm -hmm. stacks in this, you know, you got this two-dimensional grid and you stack these, these things up in, in the third dimension. 
and the kids have to count, you know, how many there are because mm -hmm. you can't always see them because they're hidden behind and they have to, you yeah. know, do all these things with them. And I mean, they were even do, having to take like this isometric view of looking at it in, on 3D and then having to create the, dement, the views from front and back and beneath. I mean, that's the basics of engineering drawing. I mean, we don't learn that until college this is the first time I was ever exposed to that oh, in wow. engineering college. And they're learning this in fifth grade to prepare fourth them. Fourth grade. That was in fourth grade, that's fourth, right. In fourth grade, earlier. getting them ready to go if they were going to go to gymnasium yeah. and so and I look at you know Gabriel in his sixth grade class he's learning about measuring angles and doing geometry stuff which I personally didn't do until ninth grade it, it didn't do any geometry like yeah. that and mm -hmm. they're measuring their angles and they're putting variables for their angles using Greek letters you know, so it's alpha and beta to, you know, to represent angles, which again is not something that I saw until college. And one of our good friends was telling us how, you know, that's one of the things that's challenging in gymnasium because they're using all of this university terminology. Uh, but honestly, it's kind of neat to have it at that point because I remember my journey through American system. And when I got to college and was learning engineering, I remember very clearly that was one of the biggest struggles that I had was learning the terminology and, you know, the letters and all the symbols for math and all of the words. I would always tell my students, my especially my freshman students that had just started college when I was teaching them, like, you need to learn a foreign language. It's called engineering language. And, you know, I was trying to help them through that in that freshman year. Whereas here, they're getting that from fifth grade on. Uh, and it's just really neat. I mean, Grayson in his fifth grade, he's doing learning things like natural numbers. You know, what does that mean, a natural number? And he's doing proofs by counterexample and all of these things that, you know, we would not associate with a fifth grade level uh, of math. So it's really, really interesting to see how things are laid out here. And it is definitely a very different focus of what they're looking at in their math classes here compared to America. So this was a fun video for me to get to talk about math and engineering and all that stuff. So uh, hopefully you found it interesting and uh, it's just another one of those differences uh, that we've been experiencing here in Germany. <laughs> one of the thousands. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, okay guys, so we hope you enjoyed this video and you know, you can catch up on all of our school videos if you want to go back, if this is your first time finding us, go back to our kindergarten video and watch all the way through because you'll really get to see just how different school in Germany is for us as Americans. It's and been an adjustment. Yeah, and if Germans moved it to America, it would be the opposite and yeah, be a lot right. of culture shocks for Germans too. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so thanks guys for watching. We appreciate your comments, likes, and support. You know, we're always reading through your comments and really enjoy engaging with you. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Cheers. Cheers.